What's up YouTube? Scott Scotty Tradition back with another video. Um, hope everybody is doing well. Um, it's Friday afternoon. Um, have a day off of work. Uh, the kids are at school and my wife just went to a invasive plant uh, seminar. <laughs> so I do have the house to myself for a little bit so that's kind of cool. Um, just want to catch you up on a few things. Um, did have a few pickups come in over the last month or so. Um, and then just a few other things I wanted to touch on. So let's get right into it. So about a month ago, I um, had this card come in. Um, pretty freaking sweet. This is a uh, CC Sabathia uh, game used patch from Topps Unique. Um, this is numbered 15 out of 40. We'll check, take a look at that patch. I mean, how awesome is that? It's a beautiful looking card right there. Um, uh, and this is from 2009 tops unique um the interesting thing about this is, of course is that cc sabathia only played for the brewers for like i don't know i think he joined the team just after the all-star break um that year back in was it 08 i think it was and so he does not have a lot of brewer stuff out there as far as cards go so to find a game use patch brewers patch of him is really unique um he played such a big role in being bringing the brewers back to relevance with basically leading them to the playoffs that year. He put the team on their back. I don't think he barely lost the game um, in all the starts that he made. And now I think the Brewers have made the playoffs five out of the last six years. Um, they've already clinched the Central again this year. So that's pretty freaking awesome. And um, CC Sabathia just have great memories of him. And he's still just a great dude. And um, I think he came back for a game this year and was in the booth and um, just talks fondly about his times in Milwaukee. So definitely a guy and a player I respect and just a really cool card that I didn't really know um, existed. So it was really cool to grab this one when it came out. Um, you don't see a ton of these come up for sale, so um, really cool to grab that one. And uh, we'll stick with that, uh, with the game patch thing. Um, so <laughs> there was a guy out of Texas on eBay who was selling, and I'm sure some of you that are watching this video have seen some of the stuff that he was auctioning off. Just some amazing cards from like uh, National, I think it was like 06 National Treasures and um, some Gridiron Gear. Just some amazing game use stuff. There was many other cards that I got absolutely blown out of the water on. <laughs> For instance, he had like an Arnie Herber, which is a kind of a rare Packers auto to have like in a product release card. Um, I think that card went for five or $6,000 and I thought I was putting in a competitive bid at 2600 and uh, I just got blown out of the water. And there were some, also some other amazing like Bart Star patches, um, um, and some other great Packers patches. Um, you'll have to watch uh, Joey Burtcat 8's video. I know he got a really cool patch in. That's at least he should be getting it in at some point. Um, and just this, this is just the kind of stuff I like, just high quality product. Um, but at the end of that auction, uh, <laughs> this is the only card I actually ended up winning, which was a a Vikings card of all things. Don't have many of those in my collection, but this is from these 1976 Pro Bowl Fran Tarkenton uh, game used Pro Bowl patched numbered out of 22. So check that out. Pretty cool. I mean, this guy has a disgusting collection and he said he was only thinning out some of it. So I can only imagine what else he has <laughs> in his collection. Um, but that's the stuff you don't see that often. And most of it all went for extremely healthy prices. So congrats if anybody was able to grab some stuff. Um, this was another stuff I grabbed from that guy in his second round of auctions. This is from 05 Gridiron Gear. This is Packer receiver Javon Walker. Um, I think it was the last number one for the last first round receiver the Packers took. Drafted him in the first round out of uh, Florida State and had all the measurables. I think he ran like a 4 3 40. He was like 6 3, 210 pounds, just a athletic freak and had a couple good years with the Packers. Um, I think he made the Pro Bowl one year. I think it was back in 04. Um, and then just kind of fizzled out. I think he got a little disgruntled with uh, the Packers not wanting to extend him and contract stuff. And then I think he ended up getting hurt at some point and traded away. Um, but just a really cool card. Um, you can see on the left it says nameplate and then number on the right. So again, some really cool game use stuff you just don't see very often. This is numbered four out of only five. So super cool. This one went super cheap too. Um, I think I was willing to pay about 30 or $40 more for it than it actually went for. 
think I got it for like a 10 or 11 bucks or something like that. Um, just really great price. So sticking with the game use category there, a couple of just neat pickups back there. Um, and here's another cool card. This is from 06 Tops Chrome. Uh, 06 would have been Charles Woodson's first year with the Packers coming over from the Raiders. And I'm still looking for a 06 Tops Chrome regular in a Gem Mint 10, just the base card, because that's part of the Team Hall of Fame set registry. And just have not seen one come up for sale yet. And I have not been able to submit one myself yet. Just have not done that process for whatever reason. Um, but I did pick up this red refractor. Um, if you take a look at the back, these are numbered out of 259. Just a beautiful looking card right there. And this is a PSA 9 as well. Pretty sharp looking card. This one went really cheap as well. So really excited to add that to the collection. Um, and then my uh, bigger addition was this card here. That's 1959 tops Dan Curry in a gem or sorry in a, a mint nine grade. I think there are two graded higher than this one. Possibly three, but I think at least two. Um, the pop on this is only like 16 or 17, I think. But so there's not a ton out there. And this is just a really nice looking centered example of the card yeah, in the new label. So there's actually been a couple of really uh, decent like Packers vintage upgrades um, that have come up over the last month or so that um, have actually are relevant to my collection, which you don't see. I mean, I've gone entire years where I only add like one or two things or only have the chance at getting under a handful of things. So I um, was able to grab this one. And take a quick look at the back there. Just a beautiful card. This is Dan Curry's rookie year. Um, part of that great 58 draft class that included uh, Jerry Kramer. And uh, let's see, I think Jim Taylor was in that uh, draft class as well. And uh, I believe Ray Nitschke as well. So just an amazing group of players from that draft class. So excited to have that one. Um, it's my second one. I already had a one in a, a older Mint 9 label. So... Um, now I have two, <laughs> which is, I don't do that often, but every now and again, I'll just see like a quality card and I'll add it nonetheless. Cause it's just, these are just great cards to have in the collection. They don't come up that often. So a couple of Dan Curry's right there. Excited to add that. Um, also, uh, brought my boys to the local card shop the other day and, uh, opened up a, uh, I think it was a, was it a mega box of uh, 2021 Prism Football and ended up pulling this uh, checkerboard, red and black checkerboard, which I believe is the more rare. I think there's a white and black as well. This is a Quiddy Pay rookie card. Quiddy Pay uh, defensive lineman out of Michigan for the Colts. So that's pretty cool. I was able to pull that out of a mega box. And then I opened up a box of Bowman Chrome first baseball just for fun. And uh, with the hobby box, you get like two mini boxes inside of it. This is my only numbered uh, Bowman first that I got. This is a, like, I guess it'd be a purple or pink wave, maybe. Not sure what you call these. This is a Vi Angel Cepeda. Not too familiar with him for the Cubs. These are numbered out of 199. So that was my uh, one pull there. Um, did pull the Aqua here of Jazz Chisholm. For the Marlins. And these are numbered out of 199. Not a rookie though, or a Bowman first. Pretty good player though. Um, and then I did pull three autos out of a box. I think you're only supposed to get two out of there. I ended up pulling three. That's why they probably didn't give me any more color. Got Justin Henry Malloy for the Braves. Not too familiar with him. Um, did get a Brewer, uh, Robert Moore. And then um, Luis Reyes for the Sox. So I don't think I had the best box of all time, but uh, it's fun to open stuff every now and again. But that, like I always say, that's why I keep the opening of stuff to a minimum. Um, never seem to, <laughs> to do that well on those boxes. Um, so um, next I'll talk about, uh, it's almost that time of year for the top 100 sports cards in the collection. Um, I'm probably going to get that video done within the next month here, maybe within the next week or two. Um, I, I went through all of my Excel spreadsheet, which I update usually two to three times a year. 
and kind of it's just a great way to keep an eye on prices and trends and overall trends within the hobby and uh, there was definitely was some interesting trends along the way um i'm actually waiting on a couple auctions to finish here in the next week so that i can kind of finalize my excel spreadsheet um cards that i'm watching um, and it's just always a fun process to do um, i have a lot of cards in the collection that some don't sell for four or five years <laughs> um before but you know between now and the last sale so it's fun to update um the collection and pricing and everything like that and some a lot of the stuff especially vintage high grade vintage football um a lot of times i'm pretty pleasantly surprised at how well some of that stuff sells for because it just doesn't sell that often and again i'm not i don't think the general public you know the regular collector out there is uh, knows the fact that vintage high grade football is actually very scarce even when you compare it to vintage baseball or other sports there just wasn't as much football printed out there. Um, football was not the darling sport of the time in the 50s. That was baseball. So there's a lot more popularity with those cards at the time. Those cards were kept nicely and a lot more printed. So check if you don't believe me, check the pop reports. They're very, very low compared to vintage baseball. So I think, and I'll, I've said this before and I'll keep saying it, I think they're just great cards to get into, um, which is why I'm... I'm always uh, amazed at some of the prices some of these go for. Even somewhat common players are just, you know, star players, not even Hall of Famers. Um, they're, that segment is quite healthy right now, um, looking at the overall pricing. Um, and a lot of the modern stuff has come back a little bit, um, undoubtedly. And I think that'll be reflected in the Top 100 Cards video. Um, but high-grade vintage football has st stood pat for whatever reason, at least uh, to this point. Um as far as what's going on in Wisconsin sports, um, well, the Packers had a rough game last night. Um, again, and if you watch the Saints game on Sunday, it was much the same. The first two or three quarters were absolute just trash, and then the defenses relaxed a little bit, and then they kind of let the Packers back into the game. Um, I did expect this this year a little bit, the kind of the ups and downs of a, a first year getting first in your real playing time quarterback. Um, I think Love's done pretty good overall. Um, I, there's a lot more things that I like than things that I dislike. Um, the Packers just don't have a good flow to them right now, though. They're very beat up on the offensive line. Uh, David Bakhtiari now, I guess, reports are that he's having another knee surgery, possibly two knee surgeries, and he's going to be out for the season, which is an absolutely terrible. You don't want your left tackle and left guard because uh, Elton Jenkins, the all-pro left guard, is out too. I mean, that's the strength of the Packers line is right there. And now it's went from a strength to like a major liability. And you saw it in last night's game. The Lions just physically beat up the Packers at the line of scrimmage. And it was rough. And I think Love took five sacks. He could have had probably seven or eight sacks. And they just completely disrupted everything the Packers wanted to do. I and mean, then you combine that with just some stupid penalties for the Packers. And the defense, um, I'm not, I've not been a fan of Joe Barry, their defensive coordinator, uh, since they hired him. He had no success when they hired him and when he came in, and he hasn't had any success uh, to this point yet. So it's hard for me to understand why he is actually still coaching the defense. Um, Packers have first-round draft picks at every level of the defense, and they go through these uh, phases where they like can't do anything. Like the Lions ran for over 200 yards, and they could. They'd had nothing to stop them. Um, so it's going to be an interesting year. I don't have super high expectations. Um, I think if all goes somewhat well, I think I'd expect them to finish around a 500 team. So we'll see what happens. Um, hopefully they can just get some development and, and go from there. Um, on the other hand, the Lions look like a really good team. Um, they're 3-1 and one now with wins on the road at Lambeau and at Arrowhead, which is pretty cool. And they look good. They look legit. They're a tough team. They, you know, they're good in the trenches. They're good at running back. Their quarterback doesn't screw them over. He doesn't make like huge mistakes for the most part. So I honestly think they'll be right there. They've drafted pretty well over the last couple of years. Um, the other teams in the North, the Bears and Vikings, not so much. <laughs> they're both 0-3, kind of going the other way. Um, the Bears are just a, a dumpster fire. They 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 are just worse bad we're very bad off right now no development for justin fields just and just nothing going on there um the vikings i think have a little better roster than the bears I, I, they're just underachieving for some reason at this point 
Um, so that's that. That's my feelings, at least on the NFC North and the Packers. Um, Wisconsin Badger football, they are 3-1 and one right now. Um, they had a loss on the road to Washington State, which is a tough place to play. And Washington State did beat them last year. And, you know, the Badgers have the new regime in and they're with Luke Fickle. And they're trying to plug in players that were part of the last regime and trying to get the most out of them. So um, had a real bad injury to the running back, Ches Malusi, last game. He's like their second string running back. Um, but he's a guy they use a lot. And uh, that's going to, it looked like he dislocated or fractured his ankle. Um, so he's going to be out for a while, um, if not the whole whole season. So that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, they're three and one, but they play like a super cupcake schedule. So <laughs> they could actually end up having a decent record this year, but that that's not to say they're going to really make any noise. I don't think on a national scale, not yet. I give them two or three years, and then we'll kind of really see what they are. Um, um, and then as far as the Brewers go, they clinch the Central Division, as I mentioned earlier in the video. That's freaking awesome. They are getting just everything out of their pitching right now, like with Woodruff, Burns, and Peralta, um, and then Devin Williams closing games, and some other really good relievers that throw like upwards of 100, 102 miles an hour. So, and decent fielding as well. Um, their one bugaboo is hitting. They are so young, and they're so inconsistent. They have games where they'll put up one run or zero runs, and and they'll score 16 one game, and that's just how they roll. So, it, you know, in the playoffs, it's going to be a bit of a crapshoot. Like, wh which offense are they going to get? Are they going to get hot, or are they going to be... Are the young players going to kind of struggle? I guess we'll have to wait and see. But they certainly have the pitching um, to at least keep them in, I think, most playoff games. So don't have high expectations necessarily, but you just never know. They're certainly going to have a chip at the table, so we'll see. Um, and then last but not least... Damian Lillard coming to the Milwaukee Bucks. How freaking cool is that? Um, very sad to see Drew Holiday go. Was a great player for the Bucks. Um, great defender. Um, was a big reason why they won the championship in 21. Just a really likable guy. Does a lot around the community. So really sad to see Drew Holiday go. Um, it's just one of those situations where if you want to get something, you have to give up something. And that's what the Bucks did. Um, and at the end of the day, Drew Holiday only has one year left on his contract. So the, the Bucks are either going to have to pay him or trade him anyways. So and now they get in Damian Lillard, who may be a top five scorer in the NBA. Compare him with Giannis, who's a top scorer in the NBA. We'll see what happens. <laughs> the Bucks have tried to win with defense the last number of years. And um, in the playoffs, it's come back to bite them. You know, Jimmy Butler uh, just dominated Drew Holiday in the last playoffs for whatever reason so as good as drew was um he really got torched in the last couple playoffs um so the bucks are trying something different they have a new coach this year and adrian griffin so we'll see how that goes and now you're bringing in damian lillard just and Giannis. i mean for me it's awesome they're just two likable guys very loyal good in their in their respective communities and i think they actually really enjoy each other and they like each other so um, very two authentic dudes, and this is going to be interesting to watch. I cannot wait to watch Bucks basketball. Um, so that's it on the sports front. The last thing I'll just mention is, um, um, I think I mentioned before that my uh, stepdad was in hospice care. I think he started that in July, so we're like two and a half months into that now. Um, he's definitely slowed down a little bit. He, uh, as of like two weeks ago, he was walking around a little bit, you know, with a cane and everything like that, and now he's kind of just not able to walk so he just spends time in a chair or in bed so I think things are definitely progressing there so you know I just try to get up there at least once or twice a week um they're about an hour away from me so I just do what I can with my work schedule and then uh my sister who lives a little closer gets up there about once a week and my stepbrother as well so we're kind of combining care there along with my mom um so that he can stay at home as of right now He's kind of has hospice service um, through their house. So um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, obviously, at some point, it, the inevitable is probably going to come to fruition here. So we'll have to be ready for that. But um, yeah, you know, uh, what I would say about that is uh, it's just in these times, it's just important to be there. Um, you don't have to do anything earth shattering. Um, just kind of help with what's needed and just be there. If any of you are, have ever been in that situation, um, just kind of let me know how that's uh, gone for you. I'm just trying to make the best of it and 
take it as it comes. So other than that, that's about it. Everything else is just a sports card world. It's a lot less uh, heavy than that. Um, stay tuned for my top 100 video. Again, that should be coming out soon. I hope as I watch this next week's of auctions and nice talking to you all. Hope you have a great weekend and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching.